during the Second World War. There were many evil war criminals who took part in the executions and slaughter of people all across Europe. Many of these executioners lived normal lives before the conflict broke out, but inside of Hungary there were huge scale deportations of people to concentration camps. The country was eventually occupied by the Germans, and inside of the land there was a huge amount of persecution of people, and after the war had finished, the job came to punish those who had inflicted such suffering. Many former politicians, who had been collaborating with Mussolini and Hitler, were brought to the gallows in cities, and in front of large crowds they were executed. But one man who was a Catholic priest, who was also the commander of a group of anti-Semitic executioners, was Andras Kuhn. After the war, he was one of those who, despite being a priest, was taken to the gallows. But why was he executed and what was his story? Join us today as we look at the execution of the killer priest, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Andras Kuhn was born on the 8th of November 1911, and as a young man he attended a seminary in Rome. He would train then as a priest in a Franciscan monastery, and it was clear he was a very devoted and religious young man. However, this Hungarian priest would then in 1943 for some reason be expelled from the monastery, and he then went back to Hungary, and he moved to Budapest. He had in the past given many different sermons and masses, and he would preach inside of the churches in Hungary. However, he would then become more politically motivated once he was back in Hungary. In 1944, Andras became a member of the pro-Nazi Arrow Cross Party, and this was a far-right ultranationalist party led by Ferenc Szálasi, and they would be involved in the government from October 1944 to March 1945. During its short time in power, they would slaughter between 10 to 15,000 civilians, including many Jews, and it's believed that they deported around 80,000 people from the country to concentration camps. The Arrow Cross Party's beliefs were very similar to the Nazis and the fascists, and they were very anti-Semitic. Before the German invasion of Hungary in March 1944, Kuhn decided to devote his time to the Arrow Cross Party, and he would then take part in the seizure of power, and he would be involved in distributing weapons to other members. He said that the propaganda drilled into us the belief that the Jews lurked behind the Bolsheviks. Amidst the wildest battles I stood with this conviction, and as Jews came before me I beat them. The Germans would help the Arrow Cross Party gain power, as they took Regent Horfi into protective custody and forced him to abdicate. Selassie was then made the leader of the Hungarian nation and the Prime Minister of the government. The Arrow Cross rule would be brutal with mass slaughter occurring across the nation, despite the fact that the Soviets were already within Hungarian borders and were fighting the Germans. Adolf Eichmann worked with the officers of the party to restart deportations of Jews from Budapest, and most of them were sent to camps such as Auschwitz and were exterminated as soon as they got there. The Arrow Cross Party and the SS would continue to exterminate the Jews of Hungary, and deportations continued as well as using death squads, who would attack in the war zone similarly to how the Einsatzgruppen would slaughter civilians following military advances. Andras Kuhn then commanded an Arrow Cross Detachment death squad in a district of Budapest, following Ferenc Salazzi leaving Budapest as he believed the city would be besieged by the Soviet Red Army. Andras's death squad would then slaughter and massacre Jews or any civilian who were hiding. During these attacks, he would often dress in priest robes and his cassock, as well as his Roman collar, showing that he was a priest. He would then wear his arrow cross armband and his holstered pistol. He would then order his soldiers in the name of Christ fire, claiming that he was doing God's bidding, slaughtering dozens of innocent people. He would later say, I always wanted to reduce human misery and suffering. This is why I fought against the Jews. They are the lords of capital. The Jews were always the ones to walk on the sunny side of the street. In January 1945, he ordered the arrest of a well-known Jewish author and his family, and Kun and his executioners then tortured his son and wife. They were then taken to the Arrow Cross headquarters, where they were stripped and tied together and beaten. Around midnight, they faced the firing squad, but amazingly, their son survived four bullets and later made it out of Hungary. On the 12th of January 1945, Kun's death squad broke into a Jewish hospital in Maros Street, and 149 patients and doctors were then shot by him and his men. He then went to another hospital and shot another 100 dead. His death squad also entered sheltered housing and abducted 500 Jews, who were all lined up on the banks of the Danube River before Kun gave the order to shoot. Further attacks took place, 
when the men broke into a sanatorium, slaughtering one hundred more. When the siege of Budapest occurred, he did not flee the city, but continued to attack and massacre. Many of the bridges were exploded to prevent escape, and couldn't help a lot of war criminals escape to Buda, and he then continued to carry out his brutal actions. But even the Arrow Cross government officials became fed up with his crimes, as he would attack buildings under their protection of neutral countries, and on the 18th of January 1945, a police patrol was ordered to arrest him. But Andras then turned the tables on them, and he arrested the police, and beat their commanders terribly, and locked them in a basement. His headquarters were then surrounded, and it was said if he did not give himself up in ten minutes, the authorities would attack the building. Andras Kun handed himself over, and for three months he had rampaged across Budapest. Andras Kun had been arrested, and he was then brought to trial. The national calling of account department charged him with specific crimes. One said that, on the 18th of January 1945, Lieutenant Colonel Rezo Mindak was severely beaten and later arrested, and Kun abused a section of police officers in the party house. He was then accused of being involved in the murders of around 3,000 people, but this was all going on whilst the Second World War was still waging on. He would be spared from execution during the war initially by Ferenc Salazzi, who commuted his sentence to 15 years in prison. But then when the Soviets captured the city, Andras Kun was released from prison by the guards as they did not know the monster that he was. He went missing for some months and it's believed pretended to be Romanian, and he then left the scene of his crimes to travel on to Italy, possibly to pick up the priesthood again. But then on the Hungarian side of the Italian border, he was captured on the 3rd of August 1945, and the border guard transported him back to Budapest, around four weeks later to stand trial, yet again for his crimes. He was brought in front of the Hungarian People's Tribunal, and he was then tried for the murder of 500 people. The true death toll of Andras Kun and his death squad is believed is more, but let's not forget that in the years during the war, he was a priest. He was tried and was found guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity, as well as the slaughter and massacre of innocent people during the deadliest conflict the world has ever seen. He was interviewed on the day of his execution, and he would state when accused of sadism, this perversion exists in a dormant state in every soul. When asked if it existed in his soul as well, Kun responded, if it did then it was dormant, I was not conscious of it. He would also admit in interviews that he did beat the Jews, but he continued to deny that he ever killed anyone, and he said he would be wrongly sentenced to death. He even claimed that he was a victim. However, on the 19th of September 1945, he was brought to Budapest for his execution. He was executed by the pole hanging method, and was brought to the stake inside the city, and was led up to the step. He had a rope passed around his body and his arms and legs were secured, before an executioner who was stood on a ladder secured a noose around his neck. Minutes later, as the crowd looked on through windows, the drop was released, and in minutes the killer priest of Budapest was executed, bringing his reign of terror to an end. It is not every day that you write a video on a killer priest who executed and slaughtered hundreds of people, leading a death squad. Andras Kun was a brutal and barbaric man who was involved in the massacres of many people as a government supported by Hitler took control in Hungary. Even when they fell from power, Andras would go on the rampage. He was a man who was sick and twisted and was a terrible war criminal who was taken to an execution stake for his crimes. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.